Good morning, congregation. I hope that you all have had a wonderful week last week and a wonderful day yesterday spending it with your loved ones and uh, enjoying all the food and the many blessings the Lord has blessed us with in Christ Jesus. Well, you know, that was a shocker to me to hear of the passing of Brother Lalo and the many other uh, brothers and sisters who has passed since I've been a member here at this congregation since 1998. I'm so thankful for all that Brother Lalo has shared with me when it comes to faith and how that he uh, was strictly by the word of God. You know, it wasn't no, no false teachings with that man. So I, I will continue to keep. Enrique is in my prayer, Lalo, Brother Lalo's family in my prayers. I want to thank the congregation here for giving me another opportunity to stand before you and before the heavens to bring forth the living word of God. Uh, we also must trust and believe in the scriptures and that God, the Father, through the Son, by way of the Holy Spirit, is working on our behalf for a better future. Behold, I make all things new. It's a beautiful saying. When one has the power and the authority to be able to say, I'm going to make all things new. Why must I make all things new? Because things are not right. Things are not very good. So in Revelations chapter 21, verses five through eight, I'll read it again. And he who seated on the throne and he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. In verse 6, he says, And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. We must understand that these words are trustworthy and true. You take your money to the bank, you have those of us who put our money in banks and trust accounts or whatever, and investments and everything, we trust that. We put our trust and our faith and our hope that our money is going to be okay. Well, you can take these sins from the word of God straight to the bank because they are trustworthy and true. So he says, I make all, behold, I make all things new. But when we look at the parallels that are alleged to uh, uh, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 5, when we look at Isaiah 43 and 19, in Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 32, those do not come to what 
God is saying in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 5, the real close, only close parallel scripture that we really find in comparison with Revelation chapter 2 and verse 5 is 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 5 and verse 17. You see, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things has passed away. The new is here. How many new creatures do we have in the house today? How many new creatures do we have in the house today? As John saw the one sitting on the throne, it wasn't the first time that John had saw one sitting on the throne. You see, God's word is faithful and true, as in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, these words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. The words, the amen, is faithful and true. So the words that comes from him is going to be what? Faithful and true. In Revelations 19 and 9, the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. You can trust and believe and take it to the bank. You see, in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 6, and he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. The transition is going to take place. You can believe that. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, we understand that when God completed his creation on the sixth day, he said that it was very good. He says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he pronounced that everything was very good. Verse 31, and he saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Yet mankind sin marring God's creation. You see, the world was no longer very good. You see, it was no longer very good. It was stained. It was marred. It was not very good in the sight of God anymore. From Genesis chapter 3 through Revelation 20, the earth and everyone in it experiences sin and death. How do we know that? Because Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 tells us so. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. We understand that sin is a transgression of the law of God. A baby can't sin, so a baby is innocent. His consciousness is not developed. But as that baby grow and grow in age, he or she will sin. That is the transgression of the law of our father. So you see, this future creation gives us hope beyond the grave. You see, there are those who believe that once you die, that's it. But for us, true believers, this gives us hope beyond the grave and affects our lives on earth as we eagerly await for the promise to be fulfilled. See, there are three things that we must keep in mind when we are talking about God and making things, all things new 
through Christ. The first thing is, is that we must understand that in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, God saw that everything was good. That is the state of God's earth when he created it. The next state that we're talking about now is today, the state of the world today, according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together with us until now. This is the present state of the world and us right now, you see. And then we come to Revelations chapter 21 and verse 5, where he says to the one who sitteth on the throne, Behold, I make all things new. God's world is the subject of these three verses. You see, the first describes God's world as it was, the second, God's world as it is, the third, God's world as it should be. You see, God's world, first of all, When he made it, the report of it is from God. So God said, according to his own report, that it was very good. It could not be improved. It was perfect. God's eye saw no flaw in it. God was satisfied and delighted with it. This is God giving a report. It was all glory and beauty, happiness and peace. But something happened, you see. That is why we are here where we are today. The Greek word for world contains the idea of order. Nothing was out of place in God's world at the time but the word very good has more than a material and more than an artistic meaning you see it is a moral word it means that there was a contrast between the world as god made it and the world as it became you see god's world was not always stained with sin and disobedience. It means that there was no sin in God's world as he made it. The second point is that God's world as it is, is no longer very good. Ichabod is written all over the face of the world. You will understand that when you read 1 Samuel chapter 4, when the Ark of the Covenant was taken by the Philistines and, and uh, uh, Phineas' wife was bearing a, a child and she received word that the Ark of God was taken, that her husband and her brother-in-law was killed, and then her father-in-law died because Samuel was a heavy man and he fell and broke his neck. And so in the process of that time, before she passed away, she said, the glory of the Lord has departed from Israel. The glory of the Lord departed from the world. Adam and Eve sinned, you see. Not that uh, God has ultimately departed us, you see, but his glory and what he saw at the time no longer moved him to say that it is very good. You see, God is in heaven. He has been working in the world from the beginning until now. Whenever the hand of God is not interfered with by man or by angels, there is order. 
Nature is even continually restoring the beauty that man has defaced. You see, it is the moral world and all that depends upon it, the sphere in which the will of man works that has caused an eclipse on the face of this earth. You see, for sin has entered, and with sin, death. The first, a murder, and the last we have is suicide. We are killing ourselves. This world is in a suicidal state of mind. It needs a physician to correct. In Jeremiah 9 and 1, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. People are being destroyed left and right. God is in his heaven, but it is prophecy, not history, to say all's right with the world. First thing is that uh, God's, and the third point is that God's world, as it shall be, if you have been baptized into Christ for the remission of sins, you are in a position to be able to be translated into the new Jerusalem at the appointed time. The first thing is that God is to come down and dwell in it. His tabernacle is with man, and he will dwell with them, as we have read in our text reading earlier. The next thing is that he will recognize and be recognized by his people. Oh, what a beautiful thing it will be to be able to be in the presence of the Almighty. They shall be his people, and he himself shall be with them and be their God. Third thing is that death and sorrow and pain shall be no more. We experience so much death, sorrow, and pain in this place. We need hope beyond the grave, you see. Because long as we live here in this sphere, we are going to experience those things. And how is it that these three things are brought to pass, you see? They are brought to pass through the blood of the Lamb, God, Jesus Christ. The old side of the Testament and the New Testament that God inaugurated through the blood of Jesus Christ. We have an opportunity to be a part of something that our imagination can't even begin to express, see. There has been a sacrifice made for sin and uncleanness, and the sacrifice has taken away sin. That is our Lord on the cross. When Christ said, it is finished, that opened up the way for God to dwell with man. You see, Jesus Christ was incarnated, according to St. John chapter one and verse 14, and we understand that in 1 Peter chapter 3, in verse 18, when Christ sacrificed his life and when he ascended to heaven, he took humanity with him. He took us with him to the Father. So how blessed are those who have clothed themselves with Christ. And now today, we can tell the chief sinner through Christ, he can be made a new creation. Behold, I am making all things new. Newness, not novelty. It is not a new world. It is not an old world made new. It is not creation. It is redemption. We understand that in, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, starting around about verse 9, and you read on through that, God is not going to annihilate everything he's going to do it with fire just like God smothered the earth with water and then brought it up out of the earth 
and caused things in life to grow on it again. Now it's going to be with fire. So God has not destroyed the world to begin again. He has renewed the inhabitants of the world in the spirit of their mind. See, your mind has to be prepared to be able to transcend this level of life here. If you have not been baptized into the body of Christ for the remission of sins, then the newness of life has not come to you. We must acknowledge God's word and believe and trust in it. There are two words in the original which are necessarily translated alike, new in our versions. You see, of these adjectives, one signifies new in relationship to time. Okay. In relationship to time, the other new in relationship to quality. See, and this is what we are talking about. We are talking about the state of quality that God has been working and bringing and manifesting in creation since history began. You see. So the first temporal novelty, the second newness, intellectual and spiritual. The first indicates that which is young, recent in time. Right? The other, not only that which succeeds something else in time, but that which in idea springs out of it, and not only succeeds, but super exceeds it. God is abundant and superseding in life. So this word, I make all things new, is not the announcement of a perfectly new thing is what we must understand. It does not proclaim an act uh, that uh, uh, at that moment done. It is not an exercise, as it were, of instantaneous power by the Almighty as when he formed the earth, made the earth before the angels of God and they witnessed it. The angels witnessed the creation of the world, see? So to make things new is not the same as to make new things. That's what we must understand. To make new things is the work of the hand, right? To make things new is the work of the heart. That's why we pray to God, give us a new heart, give us a new mind, give us a new spirit. See, this works within us. When everyone sits upon the throne of the heart, all things are made new. See, we must have God sitting on the throne of our hearts that he may work within us, that we may be sanctified in and express godliness on the outer. See? There are made so, this is made so without changing a line, without altering a feature, as in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, where he says that if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. God did not have to tear down the building that's not made with hands in order to make us new. He is renewing us in the spirit of our minds, is what's going on here to fit us in heaven. See, in Revelation, John accounts seeing the new heaven and the new earth. He sees the holy city where God dwells among his people. It is there that God promised to wipe away every tear from his people's eyes. There will be no more death. There will be no more mourning. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. Finally, all creation will be free from the rain and the effects of death and sin. See, after observing all of this, John sees one seated on the throne. So he sees and declares, behold, I make all things new. 
We understand that when he first seen the one sitting on the throne, it was in Revelation chapter 4 and 2. The next time he seen one sitting on the throne was in the fifth chapter, verse 1. This is the Father. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11 deals with the judgment throne of Christ. Revelation 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 deals with the throne of Christ. Revelation 14 and 10 deals with the throne of the Father. You see, but I believe that in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 5, we have the counsel of God there. Behold, I make all things new. They are as one, you see. So, for the new heaven and the new earth is what believers long for along with all creation. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 19, for the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. When someone believes into God for salvation, the Holy Spirit indwells him and he becomes a new creation. That is only through baptism into the body of Jesus Christ. And the one that's being baptized must be one who belongs to the body of Christ in order to have that transition take place from the world into Christ. See, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. You see, the believer is no longer bound by sin. We become new creations, able to please God and live his ways, not our ways. You see, Galatians chapter 2 and 20 sums up everything that we have been talking about. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. No longer do we live for ourselves, but we live for the one who is life. According to John chapter 1 and verse 3 through 5, all things were made through him, and while without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. A transformation occurs in those who surrender to God through baptism. And of them, it can also be said, behold, I am making all things new. Becoming a new creation affects the way that we live in society. You see, God's word reminds us to put off our former sinful ways of life according to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22 through 24 you see and Colossians chapter 3 and 9 tells us do not lie to one another seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices see in Colossians 3 and 10 and have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator and in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18, and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. No transformation can take place outside of Christ. You see, Buddha. Islam. Baptists, Protestants. Methodist, if you do not come to Christ, you will be left outside according to the word of God. There is only one way, and that way is through Jesus Christ. So, some ways that we must continue to grow as we close is by studying God's word, Praying, having fellowship with other believers, and suffering. Because suffering should draw us closer to the one that is saying, Behold, I am making all things new. It is a statement that affects the way we live when we trust Christ for salvation. You see, when Adam and Eve sinned, God gave glimpses 
of this promise as he meted out judgment on sin and promised the Messiah. See, in Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 17, Behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 10, This sinful, depraved world is not God's ultimate destiny for those who trust in him. And we, like Paul, long for the time when God will bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. Ephesians 1 and 10. Decay, destruction, death, and evil are all part of our lives on this earth. See? Even nature groans to be delivered from the curse, according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 22. You see, yet Jesus' declaration, behold, I make all things new, affords the hope that one day we will be free from the consequences and the effects of sin and we'll live with him in a new heaven and earth. This truth makes us live with eager expectation, seeking to know him more, become more like him, and to make him known to other people. Our hopeful future is what changes how we live as we wait Jesus' making all things new. I hope that this word has been an inspiration to you as we push forward toward a new year. Today, okay. Here's what I found. today is a new day. Today is a new week. We're looking forward to a new month and a new year and a closer relationship to Christ. If you have not obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have an opportunity to do so at this appointed time. If there is one who stand in need of prayer, we can pray for you. May God be with all of us. Thank you.